What's going on, everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now, and today we're going to talk about 10 reasons why you should move to Arizona, especially considering everything we know about the world today. Let's do it. First up, let's talk about the wide open spaces. If you love nature and wildlife, Arizona has you covered. As you know, Arizona has the most tribal reserve land on reservations than any other state in the nation. But beyond the reservations, we also have a great deal of wide open spaces after you get out of the big cities of Phoenix and Tucson and you start exploring there's many wilderness areas, national parks, and state parks here in Arizona. Not to mention there's a lot more water out there in Arizona than people would imagine. We have plenty of lakes and rivers to explore, and around those lakes and rivers tends to be plenty of wilderness for you to get out there and check out and explore. So for those of you who like to do camping, whether it be in a tent or in an RV mobile home, getting out there on the water in a kayak or a canoe, you're gonna have plenty of options out here in Arizona. One of the most popular things that locals do out here is hiking, so get ready to get a nice pair of hiking boots when you arrive. And next up, let's talk about the modern, efficient infrastructure that we have out here. Whether it be our roads, our freeway systems, many of our buildings the grid that laid out phoenix as you know streets and avenues are on west or east depending on what side you're on so phoenix is built on a very effective grid that is modern it is a smart city now we do have some areas that are booming more than others for example the rio salado project down in tempe is undergoing a facelift in that whole area we have one of the best airports in america sky harbor is a fantastic airport we also have some development taking place with our water systems. We have projects that are in the works. So we are growing very quickly, but we still manage to build very efficient infrastructure compared to most cities. And over the years, we've been known to build some of the best stadiums like Bank One Ballpark, now known as Chase Field, or State Farm Stadium. Now let's talk about the friendly people with active lifestyles. Now there's some people out there who don't think Arizona people are friendly, but I don't think they understand just how friendly Arizona people really are. I mean, you go out to any small town, you start talking to the locals, they'll open up to you and you can sit there for 35, 40 minutes talking about all sorts of stuff just shooting the breeze. So if you're new out here, I would recommend getting out there, going to some of the art festivals, going to the night markets, getting out there and socializing with people at the recreational areas along the lakes and rivers, joining Facebook groups to get to know people. There's a lot of different ways to meet people and you'll really realize Arizona is a tight-knit community of friendly people. Outdoor activities like golfing or hiking, canoeing, paddle clubs, stand-up paddle boarding, so many different outdoor activities that people are bonding over. So whether it's art or just regular markets where people are coming together or going to a sporting event, get out there and meet people and you will feel a lot better about your experience in Arizona. And to be honest, if you are feeling any awkward vibes, it's typically because you're dealing with other people from out of state who don't feel like they're fitting in just yet because they're from out of town. Remember, Arizona was one of the fastest growing states in the nation. Next up, let's talk about the good weather in Arizona. Now, obviously we get extremely hot summers in the desert areas, but that's typically when people go to the Northern Arizona high country and get up in the hills of White Mountain, Sholo, or even Flagstaff area Prescott to beat the heat so they still get good weather. I mean, it's really awesome weather seven months out of the year in Phoenix and Tucson. And if you don't mind a dry heat in the summer, that's still good weather with a nice cool down from the monsoons. I personally like the monsoon season in Arizona. I consider Arizona to be big sky, just like Montana. You go up into the forest where they got aspens or ponderosa pines. You go into the desert and you walk around and you look at the blue skies or the clouds building over the horizon. Really a beautiful environment out here in Arizona. 
After all, Arizona is home to five different climate zones. You have the cool plateau highlands, high altitude desert, mid altitude desert, which is more of a chaparral where Tucson is, and then a low altitude desert, which is going to be down there by Yuma. So aside from three months in Phoenix or Tucson during the summer, really, we have good weather and I can't complain. After all, during those hot months, we do have some of the best air conditioning systems in all of the world. Odds are your home is gonna have central cooling and so will every building. Now, next up, let's talk about the diverse environment across Arizona. As I mentioned previously, we have the five different climate zones and I wanna elaborate on this a bit more. So around Flagstaff to Sedona, all the way over to Eastern Arizona, you have the Mogollon Rim. This area is over a mile high. You go right below the Mogollon Rim and you come into this high desert chaparral, which is really where Cottonwood, Sedona, Payson exists, although Payson is right there into the pines. You go even further below that and you come into a mid-level desert, and that mostly is the mountain areas where you have the bighorn sheep. If you go below that, you go into the valleys. That's going to be where you have Phoenix, Tucson, and some of the other large cities that really sit in those river valley areas where the Salt River used to carve out the canyons. Another thing that's interesting, Arizona in the same day can have the hottest place in the nation and the coldest place. An example of this would be Yuma might be the hottest place in the nation, whereas Mount Baldy might be the coldest place in the nation, and all of that would occur on the same day. And it can happen in the summertime or even the spring. So if you like diversity and climates like me, then you're really going to enjoy Arizona because of this reason. Whether it be Sedona, or the Grand Canyon, or the desert areas, get ready. And this is going to lead to our next thing, which is healthy, active lifestyle. So, we talked about getting out on the water, we talked about doing hiking, we talked about going out into the city and doing night markets and walking around and living an active lifestyle going out to exercise along Rio Salado, going to gyms. Many people go to gyms out here. So people out here live a very affluent, active lifestyle. And as you can see, a lot of this goes hand in hand, which develops your personal lifestyle. If you're one of those types of people who likes to get out there and explore, and you have this inquisitive, adventurous spirit, you will tap into something in Arizona that will make you feel like you're right at home. The people who don't tap into this are the ones who stay bored and not very interested in living in Arizona. So you gotta seek it. It's like seeking the adventure. If you seek it, you will find it. If you don't seek it, you won't find it. And what you do is you try out some of these activities. It could be treasure hunting. It could be mining. It could be geodes. It could be seeking ancient ruins of civilizations that lived here previously. Next up, let's talk about the reasonably priced housing. Even though Arizona experienced an increase in home values over the last few years, still com compared to places like Washington or California, even Florida now, New York, Chicago, Illinois, we are still reasonably priced. We're even cheaper than Colorado and Utah if you look at the average median home price. Yes, inflation is hitting Arizona, but it's hitting all over the nation, not just here. And if you're looking for more affordable areas, all it takes is watching some of our videos on this channel where we show you where those affordable areas are. So if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, you should consider doing that and going through our library of videos as we continue to show you around. Also, I will put some links to other videos down below in the description along with the timestamps. And whether you're a new viewer or a returning viewer of this channel, I do recommend you guys also leaving comments below, sharing your thoughts about this list, and even making comments about things that we should have included or left off. So going into the comment section to read other people's comments can be very useful because as a community, this helps others who are thinking about moving here communicate with people who are also living here amongst each other. So it is a good time to share your thoughts on what you think are the affordable areas to live in Arizona. 
But next up, we're going to actually talk about another subject that makes this place amazing. It's fairly safe place to live. I know people think there's high crime, and in some areas there is high crime. But for the most part, Arizona is really, truly a safe place. Again, watching some of our videos in our library where we talk about the safe places and the dangerous places. But to say that Arizona is dangerous is not true just because some pockets of danger exist in certain areas. Because far and away, Arizona still, in my opinion, is a safe place. There are places around Arizona where you can leave the door unlocked. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you do that all the time just because you should take common sense into consideration but Arizona for the most part in my opinion is a place that people will come here and not have any incident for many years now just because I say it's safe doesn't mean there's not a potential problem that could be on the horizon in certain areas like I said and it doesn't mean that you should just let your guard down completely what this basically means is you don't have to look over your shoulder constantly you don't have to live in fear you can really kind of relax and I think a lot of people these days just want to relax without feeling like they're in danger of something as you can see the main objective of this video here is to get you guys to be more optimistic about your life here in Arizona or possibly moving here and really believing in the good and not necessarily the negative Next up, let's talk about how it's a hot spot for jobs in technology, whether it's working at Intel or GoDaddy, or for one of the electric car companies that have built a factory in southeastern Phoenix near Casa Grande, or one of the uh, manufacturers of microchips that have come out here from other places and resettled, like Taiwan Semiconductors. So many different tech jobs are here now and tech companies are looking to move here. So there is opportunity in the technology field here in Arizona and it's growing all across the state. Now let's talk about the diversity in food. Whether you're into American food like ranch food from the whether you're into Mexican food or organic straight from the farm food we also have a wide variety of ethnic cuisines like Chinese. We have Indian restaurants. We have Vietnamese restaurants. We have even Lebanese and Middle Eastern cuisines all across Arizona. People don't realize just how diverse our cuisine is. Southwestern cuisine is our main style though, and that's going to involve some sort of spice or hot food. Anyways, guys, that's going to conclude this episode from Living in Arizona Now. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, consider watching some more of our other videos like Top Things to Do in Arizona or Top Things to Do in Tucson by clicking one of these links right here.